What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 advanced phrasal verbs. Are you ready to expand your vocabulary and learn some very useful phrasal verbs? If so, grab your vocabulary notebook and a pen and let's kick off. <laughs> First, we're going to look at four C1 phrasal verbs and then at six C2 ones. So the first C1 phrasal verb on my list today is to scare someone away, or we can also say to scare someone off. It means to cause someone to go away and to stay away because of fear or possible trouble difficulty, etc. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, don't come on too strong, otherwise you'll scare her away. Don't come on too strong, otherwise you'll scare her away. If you want to know what to come on too strong means, check out one of my previous lessons on 20 phrasal verbs about love and relationships. You can find it by clicking on the card. And one more example, don't be too pushy if you don't want to scare your prospective buyers off. Don't be too pushy if you don't want to scare your prospective buyers off. Pushy is a C2 adjective that means behaving in an unpleasant way by trying too much to get something you want or to make someone do something. And now let's move on to our second phrasal verb, which is to settle in or to settle into. It means to become familiar with a new place, for example, a new house or job or school, and to feel comfortable and happy in this place. Two examples. The first one, I settled in my new neighborhood straight away. I settled in my new neighborhood straight away. And one more example, how are you settling into your new job? How are you settling into your new job? The third phrasal verb, one of my favorites, to throw yourself into something. It means to do something very actively and enthusiastically and to spend a lot of time doing something or working on something. And now, a few examples. The first one, the best thing you can do after a breakup is to throw yourself into work. The best thing you can do after a breakup is to throw yourself into work. And one more example, James has thrown himself into running and now he's training for a marathon. James has thrown himself into running and now he's training for a marathon. Number four, to get someone through something. Someone is optional. It means to help someone deal with a difficult or unpleasant experience or situation or do it yourself. And now two examples. The first one, imagine you're giving someone first aid and you can say, don't pass out, stay with me, I'll get you through this. Don't pass out, stay with me, I'll get you through this. The phrasal verb to pass out means to become unconscious for a short time and it's a synonym of to faint. And one more example, I'll do everything I can to get my friend through his breakup. I will do everything I can to get my friend through his breakup. And now we're going to look at six C2 phrasal verbs. Number five, to come round to something or to come around to something. To something is optional. 
It means to change your opinion of something or your mood, often influenced by another person's opinion. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, don't insist too much and be patient. I'm sure he'll come around to your point of view eventually. Don't insist too much and be patient. I'm sure he'll come around to your point of view eventually. And one more example, Jess was reluctant to travel abroad on her own, but in the end, she came around to the idea. Jess was reluctant to travel abroad on her own, but in the end, she came around to the idea. And guys, before we continue and learn five more C2 phrasal verbs, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you're subscribed to English Bits if you like this channel and make sure your bell icon is on. There is a weekly lesson waiting for you. It's on Sundays at 12 p.m. Thank you. And now let's continue with our lesson. Our C2 phrasal verb number six is to come by something. It means to get something using effort by chance or in a way that hasn't been explained. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, I was born in the Soviet Union and I remember how hard it was to come by some basic necessities. I was born in the Soviet Union and I remember how hard it was to come by some basic necessities. And one more example, I have no idea how he came by my phone number. I have no idea how he came by my phone number. Number seven, to drift apart. It means to become less friendly or close to someone. And we can use it to talk about a partner or a friend. And now a few examples. The first one, they're going through a marriage crisis and progressively drifting apart. They're going through a marriage crisis and progressively drifting apart. And one more example, I haven't seen her for ages. She moved to Paris and we drifted apart. I haven't seen her for ages. She moved to Paris and we drifted apart. Number eight, a super useful phrasal verb that can stand you in good stead for your speaking exam is to frown upon something. To frown is this, to frown. So to frown upon something means to disapprove of something. In Spanish, we say estar mal visto. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, luckily smoking is not cool anymore and it's frowned upon in many countries. Luckily smoking is not cool anymore and it's frowned upon in many countries. And one more example, finger pointing is frowned upon in this company. Finger pointing is frowned upon in this company. Finger pointing is a situation in which someone is blamed for something that goes wrong. Two more to go, number nine, to get through something. It has multiple meanings. The most common one is to manage to get over a difficult period of time. James Arthur has a song called If we can get through this, we can get through anything. But today I want to focus on a different meaning of to get through and it's to manage to do something and to finish something. And now two examples. The first one, she's got a lot to get through before the labor. She's got a lot to get through before the labor. And one more example, let's get started. We've got a lot to get through in today's meeting. 
Let's get started. We've got a lot to get through in today's meeting. And last but not least, to slip up. So the verb to slip. You slip when your feet slide accidentally and you lose your balance or fall over. And the phrasal verb to slip up means to make a mistake. And now let's look at two examples. The first one, I'm being cautious because I don't wanna slip up. I'm being cautious because I don't wanna slip up. And the last example, the figures don't tally. We must have slipped up somewhere. The figures don't tally. We must have slipped up somewhere. To tally means to match or to correspond. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this lesson up to the very end. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. This is the fourth edition with advanced phrasal verbs. If you haven't seen the previous videos, you can check them out right here. And of course, if you liked this lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram for more daily English. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!